Cool, anybody tell me what a solenoid is? So I'm trying to draw a picture of one, but it's a bunch of consecutive coils of wire with a current going through them. So anybody know where you find a solenoid? So you might find them in car deluxe, but you might find them in you know, typical cars and stuff like that uh, as well. So it's definitely one of the parts involved in running your engine. Actually, not external to the engine, but yeah. What were you going to say? So a light bulb is a solenoid. Uh, I don't... I guess, I guess we're so the tungsten filament? Eh, I didn't think about that. Okay, okay. Cool. So if we look here with a solenoid, you can view it similar to how we viewed a loop of wire, but in this case, it actually is going to have a length associated with it. These loops just keep building one on another and you end up getting this solid kind of cylinder of current flowing in one direction. So in the right hand rule kind of goes hand in hand with what we did for the right hand rule here. So, and depending on which way your coils go. So if your coils go one way, your magnetic field to point in one direction, but if your coils, if the current in the coils goes the other way, then your magnetic field would point down the center, down the opposite direction. So in this case, it's really hard to see which way I've kind of intended here. So, but in this case, I've kind of intended the coils to go wrapped around this way or the current in the coils going around this way, which would lead to a magnetic field running right down the center this way. And technically that would hook back around and stuff like that. So, but the magnetic field is fairly weak outside the coils, but inside it can get actually pretty darn strong. So another place you might see one of these is an electromagnet, really strong magnetic field in there. So the nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer, one of the big ones we have on campus, so has miles so of superconducting wire. So carrying a huge amount of current, creating a ginormous magnetic field right down the middle of that solenoid. And when you stick your sample in the spectrometer, it goes right in the middle of the solenoid so that it feels that huge magnetic field. Cool. So your equation for this on your handout as well. Cool, so you're normally gonna see it presented this last way right here. So mu naught and then N, which is the number of turns per unit length. So sometimes these solenoids can be, you know, variable in length and stuff like that. And you might know the overall length, N, and you might know the overall number of turns, and great if you do. But if all you know is like, you know, it has uh, 50 turns per centimeter or 50 turns per meter or something like that, so then you can still plug in, you know, even if you don't know the absolute length and the absolute total number of turns. Cool. But more plugging and chugging, we shouldn't be surprised here to see that, oh yeah, so the greater the current, the greater it's gonna work out to be and stuff like that. So, but these solenoids are pretty nice because the magnetic field outside is not super ridiculous, but inside it's pretty uniform all the way through that solenoid until you get towards the edges.